This is the brand new 2024 RockShox Boxer Downhill Fork. Now in its 25th year, it's the longest serving production mountain bike suspension fork on the market. And to celebrate it, RockShox sent us a set to have a bit of a show and tell session. So I'm gonna tell you everything about it, where it came from and how we got to where we are today. And Neil's gonna show you exactly what this thing can do. There are few products out there as striking and iconic as the RockShox Boxer. The big red lowers on them, all of that stanchion available to you for all of that travel. And of course, those twin crowns that just scream downhill. Now the RockShox Boxer has actually won more downhill races than any other fork. And over the years, it's accumulated 15 World Championship gold medals. The most recent, of course, being Valley Hole just the other week. Valentino Hall takes the gold in Fort William. The Boxer is downhill racing. And you can argue that actually, that when that first prototype was delivered in 1996, things changed dramatically. Before that, everything was just beefed up cross country stuff. So really, when that prototype was unveiled in 1996, it really did set a precedent for where downhill was going to go. So as I said in the intro, the Boxer is the longest serving production suspension fork from any brand. So before we dive into the internals and how this new fork works, let's have a little rewind and see exactly what happened when RockShox delivered that first Boxer. Okay, so you could say the first RockShox Boxer was actually a Judy DH. It wasn't even a Boxer at all. It was a single crown fork and it was very much in the era of when many other forks had around 50 millimeters of travel. So when RockShox released this 28 mil stanchioned single crown fork that had 75 mil travel, it felt like an absolute whopper compared to everything available on the market. But actually, if you look at it compared to today's standards, it's nearly laughable really, isn't it? Because you think that cross country forks are now really hovering around 110, even 120 mil travel. So to call a fork with 75 mil a downhill fork, well, almost laughable, but yet it was incredible at the time. But it was only the next year in 1996 when we first saw the prototype Boxer. And this thing had 32 mil stanchions, 150 millimeters of travel. And the fact they only made 20 pairs of them as prototypes was quite a significant thing because there's two very key people that started using them. The set that you can see on screen belonged to Sean Palmer and they were on his 1996 World Championships bike for Cairns in Australia. He actually didn't win that race, he actually got a silver medal by I think it was 0.15 seconds, which was just devastating for him. Uh, but that was definitely a mark in the sand for downhill racing at that moment. One of the other sets of forks went to Steve Pete, who earlier that year won his first World Cup race at Panticosa in Spain. In 1997, the Boxer Pro was released, but again, as an athlete only product. Uh, had some slightly different internals. It's still running 32 mil stanchions. It still had 150 mil travel, but it now had a hydrocoil cartridge on the inside there, uh, which was rumored to have an incredibly supple action, certainly more so than that first version. But these forks were so significantly different from the earlier Judy that it was causing a bit of a problem on the downhill scene because of the fact they were that far ahead you'd actually have an advantage and a disadvantage if you were on the other fork. So RockShots were kind of forced to release an interim product. So they released the Judy DHO. Uh, this is one on screen right now. Essentially a big burly beefed up twin crown version of the Judy with 100 millimeters of travel. Although I seem to remember you could get some aftermarket upgrade kits to sort of bump that travel up a little bit more. Not a bad fork by all respects, but really nothing compared to what the Boxer was offering at the time. And into 1998 and the Boxer Pro saw production. So this really was an eye opener because you could actually buy the fork and you could even get it on some bikes. So 150 mil travel, 32 mil uppers on there. Incredibly supple action. And frankly, there was nothing really like it at the time. And following on swiftly from this was the Boxer 151. I think this was in 1999. You can see one here on a giant ATX-1. Now this really, it's one of the more infamous forks from the Boxer range because it started appearing absolutely everywhere. Only got fond memories of that 151. 
And by 2001, the RockShox black box program was in full effect. So you started seeing all sorts of hop-ups, the little black box stickers, of course, on the pros forks. And there was rumors of air sprung boxes and all sorts of stuff going on behind the scenes. So this fork actually bumped up to 180 mil travel and it had titanium nitride coated stanchions on them. Now I remember riding a set of these on one of the earliest Santa Cruz V10s uh, to arrive in the UK and it completely blew my mind what this fork could do. And into 2005, travel had gone up yet again. It had gone up to 200 millimeters of travel, which uh, by today's standards is pretty normal. That's what we expect to see on most things available on the market. And it's interesting that all the way back in 2005, it was kind of identified as like, that's where it needed to get to. Now the uppers on these forks were the slippery silver coating. I think you can see a set here, I think I'm maybe on a Balfour frame. So a big hitting bike from back then with a set of those slippery silver uppers on them. So the model in 2008, had 35 mil stanchions. So this was a bit of a departure. The lower castings, of course, were accordingly very different, certainly a lot stiffer than had been before. We started seeing earlier versions of the motion control damper with adjustable high and low speed compression on there, and of course, adjustable rebound. And you even started seeing some different versions filtering in on pros bikes with black coated upper stanchions, although those ones are called DLC, so diamond like coating. And of course, in 2011, Danny Hart also used to set those very forks to win at Champre. That infamous run. Look at the forks. Okay, and up to 2014, and the Boxer World Cup went up to 27 and a half inch wheels. So this was a significant change in downhill. Cause you've got to think that in cross country and other elements, you were starting to see 29 inch wheels, 27 and a half inch wheels, or 650B were obviously there. But when it changed in downhill, it kind of actually really did disrupt things quite a lot. There's various shots on screen here. Now you had the first iterations of the charger damper available. And of course, into 2019 then, we saw the first models dedicated for the 29 inch wheel. Now these ones had the charger 2.1 damper on the inside, and they also had that debonair spring that remained incredibly supple with a large negative volume there. Uh, and then of course that leads on to where we are today with this, the new 2024 model. And this is the 2024 RockShox Boxer Ultimate Fork. This is the production option that you can buy. There's also a slightly less featured version that you can get as an OE spec, so you're gonna see that on loads of bikes. Uh, the damper unit isn't quite as advanced as this, but the good news is you can upgrade to the damping and the air unit that are inside this fork. So let's just look at the external, then we can look at the air leg, then we can look at the damper unit and see what this fork has on offer. So the chassis now is offered for both 27 and a half and 29 inch versions. And there's three options in terms of travel. You can have this for 180, 190, and 200 millimeters of travel. Now to make the adjustment between them, you will need one of these. You will need a different air tube on the inside accordingly for those different travel options, but pretty much most people are gonna run it at the 200 mil setting. You've got a really cool fender that mounts directly on the back of the archway available to you. Nice and neat looking, direct mount. You don't need any cable tires or anything messy. It helps protect the forks as well, stopping the mud getting to the back of the brace and stopping the mud collecting around the seals. Uh, nice and simple as it should be. And up top, of course, are the bigger changes. So you've got those new 38 millimeter stanchions. Now, of course, uh, the boxer started off with 32s, then moved up to 35s, and now we're up to the 38 mil territory, which has been proven already by that RockShox Zeb fork. You might also notice that the crowns on these look quite a lot nicer than the predecessor. These are machined crowns. They've got loads of lovely detailing on with torque settings on there, and you've even got markings on those upper stanchion tubes there. So you don't even need to get the tape measure out when you're setting them up. Okay, so into the spring of the fork and it's air only. There is no coil version available. And that's because the designers now have managed to achieve the coil performance they've been looking for, but with the setup abilities associated with air. So it's got the new Debonair Plus air spring on the inside there. This thing is incredibly supple. So it's got the most linear curve they've ever had. You can obviously adjust it. You can adjust the air pressure, you can run it softer, you can run it firmer. You can adjust the air volume with the air volume spacers. 
And now because of the way it works, it sits higher in the travel. So you don't have to rely on air volume spacers or low speed compression or running additional air to keep them high. And what you do by this is you gain more sensitivity in that middle part of the stroke, which is really important and actually part of the key to having a fork feel like a coil fork. Now to do this, the designers had to change the way that the actual air spring works because going up from a 35mm to the 38mm, they found that the existing design with that debonair spring in there was essentially too progressive and it didn't offer the right traits that they wanted. So what they've done is created a twin tube system uh, with an increased negative air chamber, which is actually achieved by changing the air shaft on the inside from the 10 mil, which has always been a standard, up to a bigger 14 millimeter. In addition to this, it's got a new bottom out bumper on that shaft as well called the Jounce bumper. And I guess you could compare it to the sort of thing you see on the shaft of a coil shock. And the aim of this, in addition with the damping is to provide a nice smooth end of travel stop. There's no metal to metal clunk, no matter how hard your landings are. Okay, so on the inside, you have that new Charger 3 damper. Now this unit is actually from a Pike. Uh, it's the same unit you see on the Lyric and the Zeb and very similar to what is on the inside here. Now this system is an IFP based damper. You've got five clicks of high speed compression. You've got 15 clicks of low speed and they're completely independent. So this is a huge thing that RockShox have tried to push. Uh, they've been doing it last year, of course, with the Pike, the Lyric, and the Zeb. And the point is that any adjustment you make to high or low will not have any effect on the opposite, uh, which in the past with some dampers, you could find perhaps putting on some low speed, you will get a little bit of harshness in high speed impacts. No longer, they're completely separate, which is a fantastic addition. Now, compared to the previous Charger dampers that use that bladder design, the Charger 3 is an IFP design here, and if you look closely, you can see a little port on the top. Now, one of the cool things about this is as the damper cycles through its travel, it's naturally going to ingest a bit of oil. Now, when this happened with the bladder-based designs, you would end up with too much oil, and after a while, you're going to have to get them pressure bled. Basically, you have to get the whole damper rebuilt, bled, and sorted out. Whereas if you have too much oil end up in this design with the IFP, it can actually just overflow from that port and back into the lower legs there. Now there's more smart things on the inside of these forks as well. Now on the stanchion tubes themselves, you've actually got some ports that allow the oil to be carried from that lower leg lube up and above the bushing. So as the fork is cycling in and out of its travel there, the entire time it's self lubricating. So it's the slickest action ever. And that's also gonna help keep stuff out of those seals as well. So it's just gonna be a far superior operating fork. These ports also evenly distribute the air volume, so you're gonna keep a consistent spring rate as the fork is cycling through that travel. And as with some of the other forks, they've got the pressure relief valves on the back there. These ones have got a little knurled aluminum knob. A bit nicer to use with gloves, a bit easier to use arguably. A effective unit there for just essentially atmospherically balancing those forks, because sometimes on those longer, really long aggressive descents, you can get a bit of trapped air in those lower legs. Just like the Pike, the Lyric and the Zeb, this new damper and this fork runs the buttercups at the bottom, which reduce 20% of chatter uh, that can get through to the damper and accordingly uh, end up making its way through to your hands. Now these things are essentially suspension isolator units for your suspension. Uh, you'll see similar concepts on the handles of chainsaws. Uh, the idea is to remove the vibration from the user's hand. Uh, so really cool system to have that. They've got that on these new forks now. And just like the RC2 unit that you see on the Pike, the Lyric and the Zeb, the rebound circuit is now completely silent. So this fork is completely silent in operation. You don't get the noise of the air circulating back through those ports. So noise, there's nothing. And at first, you'll be thinking, what's, what's going on? But when you get used to the feel of a fork that's completely silent, you can start to hear the traction you have. You hear other things going on on your bike. It's a phenomenal thing as part of the fork. And that silent and slick operation is also accentuated by their dedicated proprietary lubricant that's made by Maxima. So it's obviously the damper fluid and the lower leg fluid on these forks. And finally, the weight and the pricing. So the weight is 2,840 grams and the pricing in the UK is 2,029 pounds. In US is $1,899 and in euros is 2,279. 
Now you can also get some upgrade kits. So if you have the OE model of the Boxer, the 2024 Boxer that is, that might come on a production downhill bike, you have the option of upgrading to the damper and of course that Debonair Plus unit on the inside. Right, let's get this thing plugged in on a bike and so I can hand over to Neil. Tell you what, that thing is a weapon. Mm -hmm. 